Hello and welcome back to Study History with Mr P and my GCSE topic summary video today is about changes in land ownership from Anglo-Saxon to Normans between 1066 and 1087. Okay, so in many ways, not the most exciting of topic, but one which could well come up on your GCSE paper. So let's jump in and find out some of the key points. So, after the Normans took control of England, there became a lot more landowners owning land by 1086 than there had been in 1065, so the last full year of an Anglo-Saxon ruler. The king, but in 1086, um, owned far more land than Edward the Confessor had in 1065. And whereas in 1065 the Godwinson family had controlled huge areas of land in England, by 1086 no one tenant in chief, so major landholder, controlled anything like as much land. Equally, the, the huge earldoms that existed in 1065 had been broken up into mostly smaller areas by the year 1086. Now, to start off with, part of William's policy of land ownership has, as we've already looked at in a previous video, seen he rewarded his followers with land, but equally many Anglo-Saxons had kept land as part of William's policy to win over Anglo-Saxons, to trust them, and to win them over and to see him as the legitimate king. But the rebellions against William showed him that the Anglo-Saxon elves could not be trusted. Normans, therefore, replaced Anglo-Saxons as landowners. So that by 1087, the following applied. Over half the land was held by about 190 tenants-in-chief, but only two of those were Anglo-Saxons. A quarter of the land was held by the church. The royal estates of the king made up one-fifth of the land, so therefore less than 5% of the land was still held by Anglo-Saxon aristocrats, typically though in much smaller estates than these people had once held. So why, or sorry, how did the Anglo-Saxons lose their land? Well, Anglo-Saxons lost their land in a number of ways. One of those ways was by forfeit. So if somebody acted against their king, their land could be forfeited, i.e. they lost it as a punishment. William also made, or then made his followers the heirs for Anglo-Saxons who'd forfeited their land, so that increased Norman rule or ownership of land. Also, new earldoms were created. So forfeited land was used to create new earldoms for his followers. They were created to defend trouble spots, but equally, the land areas that he gave to his followers were smaller than the large earldoms that Anglo-Saxons had held. Also there were land grabs. These were illegal ways that Anglo-Saxons lost land through corrupt dealings and the theft and seizure of their land. Equally, the way in which land was held under Norman rule was different to that from Anglo-Saxon times. So if we look back to Anglo-Saxon times, Anglo-Saxon land holding took a number of forms. One of those was known as book land, where lords granted out land to their followers and a charter showed the right of this person to their land, and land could be passed on to heirs or sold to others. There were also leases, where land was loaned to somebody for money and was loaned for a set period of time. And people also received land, but in return had to do duties in return for that land. Now under Norman, some of this was different. So William, as the king, said that he owned all of the land. Anglo-Saxons who previously owned these areas of land then had to redeem their land back from William by paying for it, so they had to pay for their own land. When William gave land to his followers, they did not, though, have to pay for the land, but they would lose it if they died without an heir, or if they acted against the king. So in this way, William maintained loyalty through land ownership. Equally, if somebody did have an heir, they still had to pay to inherit the lands. This was a way for William to generate money and at the same time to maintain loyalty. There's also a way of um, tenants-in-chief holding lands. So tenants-in-chief could reward their own followers, just like the king had done, with land and then reallocate it if a thane had acted against their king um, or him. So this was a good way for the, the larger landowners in Norman time to get loyalty to them. And peasants, well, peasants were still peasants, but they had to work even harder under Normans. So lords made peasants work for them, so they had less independence. So the churls from Anglo-Saxon times no longer really existed because all peasants were now tied to their land. OK, so I hope you found this video quite useful. It might also be handy to compare it to one of my other videos that looks at Anglo-Saxon society so you have a greater sense of how things were different in terms of land ownership and society in Anglo-Saxon England compared to Norman times. Thank you.